When I was a teenager, we had a van to transport my cart and family around the country when I was racing. Sometimes we even slept in it. Today's rev test is all about three valiant vans and how they cope, helping Erin move house. Yes, she's called in rev removals because she's too tight to pay for a decent company. So here are three of the most popular short wheelbase vans as searched for on Autotrader. We van drivers are a patriotic bunch, so small wonder that we love the Vauxhall Vivaro built in Luton. The first generation was popular for 13 years, and Vauxhall haven't messed around with this second generation. It's pretty much the same with a few small updates. Just check out those stickers, you've got to love it. The Volkswagen Transporter is many things to some. It's a practical and competent workhorse, and to others, it is a well-loved member of the family that enables all kinds of adventures. In this one-ton van segment, the Ford Transit Custom shares the same front grille and headlamps from the company's cars to give it that familiar Ford look. I'm just a tiny bit jealous of those Vauxhall stripes though. Powering the Transit is Ford's EcoBlue diesel engine. Here in mid-level spec, so it's got 130 horsepower, which makes it the least powerful of our three vans. However, it has got the most amount of torque, and that is the magic stuff you need to get the van and its contents moving from a standstill. And it gives an extra boost for overtaking, which is very good news indeed. On a motorway, when you're up to speed, you can turn on the intelligent speed limiter, which is a first in any commercial vehicle. It's a system that basically reads the speed signs and then it will adjust the car's cruise control accordingly. If you want tech, the Transit's got it. There's Ford's Sync 3 voice control system that works with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And this eight inch infotainment system is touchscreen and really easy to use. There are a host of options, including an advanced warning safety system called Cross Traffic Alert, which, when you're reversing, it will predict if a pedestrian or a cyclist is likely to come into your path. Pretty cool. This van has got the best storage space by far. There are plenty of cubby holes up the front, some that will hold A4 files. You can also put those in the glove box. There are a plethora of cup holders. You can store a two litre bottle over on the left there. There are loads of plugs, USB ports, and the pièce de résistance, a three point plug socket. I kid you not. Check this out. When it comes to driving through tunnels, tight gate posts, and parking spaces, then the dimensions of all three vans do vary, but only by a few centimetres, and the Ford sits smack bang in the middle. I am in love with the Vauxhall Vivaro, it is fairly safe to say. It's got its Made in Britain sticker proudly on the back, a 1.6 litre turbo diesel engine. It's middle of the range of our trio of vans for power and torque, and actually it's got the smallest payload figure by about 10 kilos or so, but I won't have a word said against it. It's an ideal family vehicle actually in many ways. It's got a lovely high up driving position, good visibility, rear parking camera, and me and my two kids are very happy up front on this bench seat in the front of the cab. And you're part of the gang of van drivers. What could be better than that? If I do have a minor quibble of the Vauxhall Vivaro, and it's only minor because I love this van, it's the touchscreen. It's not good enough, really, uh, considering how much time van drivers spend in their vans. Everything should be easy to access. Apple CarPlay would be fantastic. It's not here. Sometimes you touch the screen and nothing happens. Sometimes you touch it and it does, but it's all a bit fiddly. The cup holder is just not deep enough to stop a bottle from turning over. I had a right go at my kids for spilling coke all over the van. It turns out it's not their fault. There's a lovely amount of storage there in the dash, easy to access for your copy of the Express, or in my case, Tatler. And there's also a lovely deep bin over here, which is really handy. 
I think undoubtedly the thing that I love most about vans is the brilliant ergonomics of them. They're just really comfy to drive. They've got a lovely upturned steering wheel, you've got a gear stick just here close by, an armrest. And if you've got short legs like me, you can just feel much more on top of the controls without being too close. It is clean and smart in here. VW is definitely going for a car-like vibe and it's well on its way. On the other hand, the seats are excellent. There's loads of adjustment in both the seats and the steering wheel. Lumbar support for the driver is standard and grab handles on both sides for an easy in and out. This transporter has a petrol engine. It's the only one of our trio and it's also a rarity in the class. It's a two litre turbo with 150 horsepower. That makes it the most powerful, but if you're after fuel economy, you're going to want to stick with diesel. Officially, this brings 31 miles per gallon. Quite surprisingly, the engine copes well with hauling the transporter's bulk, even though there is loads in the back. And it's even pretty nippy at lower speeds. It's got that nice balance of feeling light and car-like, but also controlled and firm like you'd expect from a van. The pedals are nice and light and the gear change is really smooth. In every transporter you get a DAB radio, a Bluetooth, a USB connection and a smallish touchscreen. It's all relatively easy to use, although it is quite small and it's also angled away from you, which makes it a little bit trickier. I've got a couple of fancier optional extras though. We've got App Connect and the Discover Media Navigation System. There is an impressive amount of safety kit in the transporter as standard, including autonomous emergency braking with brake assist and a post-collision braking system, driver attention alert and hill hold assist. Cabin storage in the transporter isn't all that great. The glove box isn't very big, neither is the dash top cubby, and there aren't really any places that you can tuck bits and bobs out of sight. Usefully though, there are optional front parking sensors fitted to go with the standard rear ones, but a rear reversing camera would be so much better. There aren't any clever gimmicks in the cargo bay, but you do get six or eight load lashing rings. The most basic transporter and the top of the range sport line also don't come with a bulkhead, but this is the high line, so here it is. The transporter is in second place just for payload and it's the tallest and widest of our three. If you want a great amount of cabin practicality and a commendable level of refinement, it's the Ford Transit Custom. If you want the classiest van of its type that can still get the job done, it's the VW Transporter. And if you want a good dose of British pride, it's the Made in Britain Vauxhall Vivaro. Mm -hmm.